very kindly joined us remotely in Las Vegas for a press conference last October on the first day of IMEX America and spoke eloquently about the value of meetings to corporations and as generators of economic growth. Um, that day also coincided with the launch of, of Bill's book, Winner's Dream, which I and many other colleagues at IMEX have read with great interest and enjoyed reading your story. Um, one part of it that resonated very much with me was your passion for people and the development and nurturing of teams for growth, for, for, for success. It gives me great pleasure. Now, please join me in welcoming to the stage Bill McDonald. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Ray, for the warm welcome. Wolfgang, Matthew, fantastic openings. Also to Karina and the work that you've done in putting together IMEX. It's a masterpiece. It's the benchmark. It's the role model for meetings worldwide. And isn't it great to have it in Frankfurt? Come on. It's been in Heidelberger. I would also like to acknowledge a good friend of mine that's here today, a guy by the name of Kevin Olson, who runs a company by the name of One Smooth Stone. About 20 years ago, Kevin and I started out on this big meeting journey together. And at the time, we locked in on the concept of meetings to inspire people. And I was running a business back then that was about a $700 million business and had a dream to make it a $4 billion business in less than four years. And we came to the idea that if you were going to inspire people, you had to bring them all together. And it was quite fascinating to see this process because a meeting like this did require an investment. I was gonna fly everybody in my division of Xerox to one location and get the message out there that we were gonna change the world together. That documents had moved from boxes to services and actually people would order things on demand. They call that cloud today and we would be the leaders, and we would go from 700 million to over 4 billion. I was, I was in a boardroom, and management said, Bill, this is a very big bet, this is a very big investment, and this is at the same time, of course, that the company was sending out the quarterly memo. You know what the quarterly memo is? Don't travel. Okay. Whatever you do, don't order any water, God forbid you should be hydrated. How many people can we avoid hiring? How much cost can we cut? Let's have another meeting with the Excel spreadsheet and see how much more money we can cut out of the budget. And I was doubling the investment in big meetings and turning people on to literally take a business that was not growing and grow it by 50% on a year-over-year -year basis. So the moment of truth came where somebody has to lead and basically say, this is a badge moment. A badge moment means, if I'm wrong, you can have my badge. That's what leaders have to do. So we all came to San Antonio by the thousands. And lo and behold, in a few short years, we didn't hit the four billion. We hit 3850. But that was also 30% more than the business thought was possible. So the meeting more than paid for itself. So inspiring people to do great things, to change the world, is why we do what we do. And why do I admire this industry so much? Because you are on the front lines in the battle against all the bureaucrats that think emails and PowerPoints actually ever changed a darn thing. So let's inspire the world together. The second reason I think these meetings are so important is reinvention. You're reinventing. Every business is reinventing itself in one way or another. Is that true? Of course it's true. The scene was 2010. I had just become the co-CEO of SAP. 
first move was to bring all the leaders from around the world to one location. Of course, that location just happened to be Germany. And we took the top 250 managers from around the world and we brought them to Waldorf. We got them in a room and we said, we're really proud of the company we work. Number one business software company in the world in applications and analytics, participating in 110 billion US dollar market. That's a great business. But here's where the world's going. The world's going to move very quickly to a new data model because data is doubling in the world every 18 months. So we think HANA will reinvent everything where you can put all the information in memory in one data platform the structured, unstructured social information, and we can now run the world in real time. Why is that important? Because data is doubling in the world every 18 months. And the 20th century technology cannot keep up with the demands of 21st century challenges. The second thing, the consumer is totally in charge now. The explosion of mobile devices was quite clear. They were going to explode into 60 billion devices by 2020. And now all the information that an individual would access from your corporate system would start with the device. And therefore, the user experience had to be every bit as gorgeous on Monday morning in the office as it was on Saturday afternoon on their living room couch. So consumer grade, beautiful user experiences became essential to connect with any device in any channel. And then there was the idea of the cloud. The cloud, how do we consume innovation faster without heavy hardware and services investments so small and mid-sized businesses and economies could prosper all over the world? This was gonna be a major shift for our company. And then finally, we had this big idea around not just consumer networks like Facebook, which is an important thing, but business networks where you could manage labor, direct and indirect materials, or travel and expense, and do this between companies in a global economy to capitalize on this globalization and digitization. So we set out on a new journey. We were going to help the world run better, and improve people's lives. What was the first lesson about meetings? Well, as the message was delivered and role modeled for each of the individuals in that room, I then said, okay, now managers, what I want you to do is take exactly what I said, go into all the buildings in Waldorf and speak to our colleagues in coffee corners and just tell the story. You tell that same story, how we're going to change the world around these new imperatives. Guess what happened? Take a guess. What? Me? Talk to people? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, managers don't necessarily feel totally comfortable talking to people. So the meeting brings them together. You role model them. You certify them and then you let them practice and get out there with their people. And then once they're certified and they can send the message, then they go to all corners of the world and share it and cascade it. So everybody knows what to do. That's how you reinvent companies. But after you tell your internal people how you're gonna change, what's the next step? You gotta tell the customer and you gotta ignite the ecosystem around a new opportunity in a new world to be one. That's why we pulled together 20,000 people at SAP Sapphire in Orlando, or 15,000 in Beijing, or another 15,000 in Europe live, and then another half a million online, creating three billion internet impressions so you can share your strategy and get the word out that you're moving out and you're transforming and you're ready to change the world. So this is the reinvention part of your industry. And you know what I learned? I learned that they really don't care how much you know until they first know how much you care. And I don't know how you communicate that through email, text, and PowerPoint. 
but I do know you can get the message across in a live setting where enough people can get really excited about where you want to go. Finally, celebration. This idea of celebrating success is so important, and there's no other way to do it than to change cultures. I remember when I started in SAP in 2002, I asked people, what are we doing for our top performers? Where is the top performer celebration this year? Now this is October. Oh, we haven't figured that out yet. When were you going to figure it out? February. Next question, where is the celebration going to be? And who goes? And how high do they have to perform to get there? Well, we just take the top 50, and then we send them on a boat somewhere. Where? We haven't figured it out yet, but it's a boat. What's the entertainment? Well, we hired Shirley and the Shirelles. Now, Shirley and the Shirelles is a great group. They're Hall of Fame quality. But it had been a long time since Soldier Boy was a big hit. <laughs> so I said, this is interesting. I really, really think we have to pull it together. So we made a vow that day that top performers would be celebrated in a culture of grandeur. And you know where I learned this? In Puerto Rico. I have to take you back in time. I go to Puerto Rico in 1991, and I'm thinking about my memories. I walk in as the American, right? Everybody expects the American to be loud, a little obnoxious, lays out the vision and the strategy, and has all the answers. Isn't that about right? <laughs> See how much I've matured here in Germany over the past 12 years? <laughs> so I get in there, and I'm sitting, you know, kind of like this in front of the team in my first big meeting, and I said, I come to listen for two weeks. That's the end of the meeting. Goodbye. And for two weeks, I listen to the people. And I asked them, why are you so messed up? You're number 64 out of 64 businesses in the world. You're dead lost. How can you be so bad? What's going on here? So after listening to all this, I came to three themes. Theme number one, we want to have a vision. We need to know what you want us to do. Theme number two, we want to be motivated and inspired when we go to work. We don't want to feel badly. And theme number three is we want our Christmas party back. <laughs> what? Yeah, the prior guy took away all the water, the soda, and the donuts, and the Christmas party. So while we spend a lot less money, we're all demoralized and we don't sell as much either. Okay, okay, let me think about this, but let's, let's, let's dream for a second. If we did bring the Christmas party back, what would it be like? Well, it would be at the El San Juan Hotel in San Juan, Puerto Rico, the best hotel. Oh, that sounds nice. What would we wear? Well, the men would be dressed in tuxes and the women in gowns, and we would dance and dance and dance. How long would we dance? We would dance until 3 o'clock in the morning, until they made us leave. Wow. And who would be performing for us? Whoa. We would want Gilbertito Santa Rosa, who was the number one salsa singer in Puerto Rico, maybe even in all of Latin America. Wow, you would want Gilbertito himself. Okay. Let me sleep on this. I come back to you tomorrow. I come back tomorrow. We get everybody in a room just like this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the vision. We're going to focus on the customer. The water and the soda and the donuts are back in all the cabinets. <laughs> and we settled this matter on the Christmas party. Now they're really listening. It's even better than being hydrated to go to the Christmas party. We booked the El San Juan Hotel. It's a black tie event. And Hilgartito Santa Rosa is the entertainer. Well, everybody rises. Yeah, puño! Everybody's happy. Push-ups on the ground, you know? <laughs> and I said, you look very excited, and I am excited that you're excited, but there's only one catch. Yes? What is that, you know? 
The catch is, we go from 64 to number one, and we do it this year. Because there's nothing noble about dancing to Hilbertito Santa Rosa as the number 64, the number 32, the number 10, or the number five. You've got to be the best in the world. And that's what we're going to do. Wow. The place went silent. All the oxygen came out of the room. Maybe this guy's not so much fun. <laughs> to which I replied, relax. All I ask you to do is give me a little trust. I give you a little trust. Because trust is the ultimate human currency. Let's see how it goes. Let's give it a shot. You willing to try? The oxygen comes back in. People kind of rise a little. And that year, about mid-year, we're number 15. By October, we're number 10. By November, we're number 5. By December, we're number 1. <laughs> Meetings matter. So, you have to celebrate the victories, you have to reinvent the businesses, and you have to inspire the people. We just finished our convention at SAP, SAP Sapphire. We had 20,000 people come. We had another 250,000 online. And I'm told that we had a billion and a half impressions on the internet from this event. Why do I think it really matters? It's not just because we get the message out, we inspire customer, people, and ecosystem, and drive business. I'll tell you why it also matters. It matters because the ground transportation, the air transportation, the hotel staff, the food and entertainment staff, the public sector employees, the individuals cleaning the woman and the man's room, the people that count on the people that come to these major cities and put on major events to transform their businesses also matter. And I think that's why you matter, because you create a network effect in the world that is not just measured in numbers. It's measured in the lives that you touch. How many kids will get an education? How many ideas got exchanged? How many memories got made? because of the events that IMAX is putting on. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you are truly changing the world. You should be so proud of yourself. It's such an honor for me, in some small way, to come here today and say thank you for your leadership. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.